All right, welcome back to the day two continuation for the mobile testing tutorials. So here is where uh, things will start getting very interesting with what we do, especially because of the fact that we will get very practical into our exercises and approach. So what we're going to do today is we will get into a very, very simple live project. When I say live, I mean to say that if we were on a project at a workplace and we were given an assignment, how do we go about doing it? What is the typical process at a very beginner level? And as part of that, we will also learn a little bit of uh, about uh, Android SDK. Okay, and how we can install some of those emulators onto our own local machine. Now, what we will do is this. This is the approach that we will take um, for uh, the mobile app testing. In fact, uh, the number four and number five is not really an approach, but as part of the whole plan, this will come in. What is the approach? One is that we will identify a web-based application and understand what is the basic functionality that we need to test. Either we look at the web and pick up an application or we look at some of the documentations uh, for a specific application like functional documentation and so on and try to create um, some test cases. Uh, write down some basic tests that we want to execute. Okay, And then we will execute these functional tests on the web. Okay. Once we do this, then I'm going to show you how we will now do it on an Android SDK using some emulators. Okay. And once I do the installation in the next session, we will be actually be able to sit down and do a little bit more of uh, the execution on that system. Okay. So uh, before I get to what is Android SDK, let's talk about a simple application. And I'm going to take Twitter.com because just the fact that it is an easy to use application. A lot of you have been exposed to it and it is not a complex functionality for you to understand. So when the complex functionality is not very complicated, it is it becomes easy for you to be able to relate with the fact that yes, uh, what is more applicable with what we're trying to learn and that is how to test mobile applications, right? So here is twitter.com, okay? Now, I would like to write a few test cases on some portions of the functionality for twitter.com, okay? Now, when you see twitter.com on your web browser on your local machine or your PC or laptop, this is how it is looking, at least today, as of the date. And when you may see it in the future, it may be looking absolutely different because that's what uh, brands are all about. They keep changing the way they look. They keep rebranding it and so on, right? Now, what I want to do is create a few test scenarios. So instead of rather than wasting time on this video on creating it, I am going to use an automation plan document that I've recently used for one of my QTP webinars. So there I've created a very complex hybrid framework, but as part of the framework, I created a few test cases. Okay, very simple test cases, but the good thing is we have the content already present for us. And then I have the test steps for each of those test cases. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to save this oops, as uh, mobile app testing sample test cases. I'll put this on the website so you can download this Excel directly. So if you're watching the video, please go to the website and you can pick it up from there. The, this plan was for automation testing. So now I don't need this plan. What I'm going to do is delete this sheet. Okay. And then just focus on a few sheets for now. So let me try and uh, at least change a little bit here. I don't need a module right now. I'll keep it very simple. We are rather focusing on the home page, just a simple module, okay? And as part of uh, this, what I did is I created a TC open and TC close as one start and end test cases so that I save time in not having to open the test cases every time. So I'm sorry, the browsers every time. So uh, now I have the test case ID, which is a unique description of a specific test case. 
in a test case be something that we are testing that yes is this a pass or a fail the name is something that is describing it very short description at a little bit longer uh, and then I have an execute flag it's basically saying do I want to execute it or not when I did automation testing this flag was used automatically to identify which test cases to execute uh, using some uh, advanced VB script driver scripts if you're someone who has attended my QTP training then you already know what I'm saying then we have a result which is a pass or a fail and um, this is about automation so right now I don't need anything with automation we're not focusing on that for now I am focusing on if I want to execute it and if there's a result okay now there is a test data there are keywords I don't need this as well for now okay I'm just going to delete it anything that I don't need I'm going to delete then I have something called as test steps. This I will keep it uh, because it will be easy for you to understand what is it that we require. Okay. However, for these test steps, there is something basically saying that there is a test case ID that you can link with. Then there is a description for the test case that is linking you with the sheet. Right. But then each test case is broken down into multiple steps. Steps which will help you to open the browser and perform certain actions okay that, those are the test steps now uh, okay uh, what did I want to say hmm. now what we're going to do is this and what I don't need here actually I got uh, dragged into something that I observed and I thought was it something that I can improve in the next sessions I don't need these keywords and inputs and all that because they were created uh, for a different purpose I need a result if it's a pass or fail and that's about it for now I'll keep it simple okay so here are the steps corresponding to each test case okay so what basically for example I have a test case 001 and the name is login verify that the user can log in with valid details how do we do this to perform this test case execution we open the browser go to the URL enter the username password click on remember me click on test sign in verify sign in log out browse now uh, close browser okay very simple test similarly there is also one test case for login incorrect okay uh, where open the browser go to URL enter username password click on remember me click on test sign in verify that it asks for humanness and activate your account these are the steps for it all right now with these in front of us you could see very clearly that you could select which one to execute and which ones you don't want to. so I'm going to keep this as is right now and save it for you to be able to access I hope I saved it right this okay there you go it's in the folder that we can pick it up from so now what we're going to do is let's talk about um, Android SDK why do I, okay in fact sorry before I go to Android SDK, let's talk about quickly a couple of test cases that we can execute and then we'll go in there. The reason I'm showing this is someone who's very beginner level into mobile automate, uh, mobile application testing, it is easy for you to understand what we do. So if I were to test an application, okay, if I were to test an application on a mobile browser in a local machine and let's say for now I don't have the valid credentials, I'll get, I'll create a dummy account that we can use for future uh, sessions but for now let's say that this is what I want to test I open the browser and go to the URL so this is the step we perform okay we enter a username let's say Karthik eLearn okay and we enter a password and I don't have a password so I just entered something random then click on remember me we are executing a test case as I see and click on sign in as I'm doing this, am I able to perform each step, yes or not? And that is what you got to put the pass to, pass, pass, pass. Now, can we click on sign in, click on test sign in, uh, not test sign, why is this test sign, I don't know. Click on the button sign in, okay. This is a pass, I could click on it. Now, do I see a message that says verify, ask for humanness in the sense, I don't even know if humanness is a correct English grammatical word, but that doesn't matter. What we have to focus is, am I getting a page which is specifically looking in a certain manner? 
and now I say yes this is a pass okay and now activate your account um, did it say uh, activate your account is there a link like that there you go there is a link to activate your account do you see this so I'll say pass so what I expected is what I saw now yes if you look at specific details I have not done every part of testing here okay yes but that is fine because I'm only interested in executing what I'm supposed to be doing okay second everything is not precise enough and which is something that you should do documentation is an extremely critical aspect of being a good software testing professional so please focus on proper documentation skills mentioning and writing words and sentences in a very very generic manner so that anyone can understand clearly don't use complex words simple words is fine okay activate your record so basically it should be more like can you see what is what do you mean by activate your record is are you saying can the whole process work no rather can you see verify link activate your record is that present or not okay now every step in my test case is a pass so I can go and say test case 005 this is a result we executed this and is a pass okay we didn't execute everything but just this so I can easily mark the others to be no for now we didn't execute them All right. so that is how you go about executing functional tests uh, and displaying what you do now what you should also do is give information about what are the environment details on which you tested this okay and you should probably mention that you did a pass on let's say on an IE browser this is IE right on a Windows uh, machine IE oops IE Windows let's say XP machine okay um, and let's see what is the version of this browser where do I see the version of this browser tools internet options no help about IE IE8 I don't even know if it's the latest one I don't think this is the latest one but this is IE8 Windows XP now this is what I tested this on okay and uh, this is the main twitter.com URL now the same thing you may have to repeat it on another browser and see if it is working typically functionality wise there may be no issue you may see that yeah it is working but what may happen sometimes is let's say that I open twitter.com on a Firefox I'm not going to execute the entire thing again but just giving you a significant um, I mean, idea of what I'm saying let's say you revisit twitter.com and once you visit there you are now asked to do uh, things more specifically so let me log out from this account because we don't need to be logged in and now let's go back to twitter.com home page all right so at least so far the look and feel is the same I'm able to enter I'm able to click on password so very quickly we can do at least the one portion of it remember me we want to click and sign in, right so do I see everything in the same way now let's wait for it and see so see do I see we got to check are you human and uh, do you see activate uh, your account yes now are they exactly the same a uh, little bit of difference in terms of the capture but the capture was designed to be dynamic so that's fine but the font also seem to be different uh, the edges of this button for example is um, sharp here it is more rounded do you see this so there's certain amount of a difference in the look and feel also not just uh, the functionality I don't see too much of functionality now this could also be because I have zoomed in um, in this browser and uh, it's not a full view so uh, I should be able to see options why do I always get stuck with the small simple things of zooming in because it's not easy for example see IE it's easy for me to zoom in and out here and here it gets a little bit more tricky on this browser so I use it more often than anything else 
that's okay i don't care uh, so i'm just trying to verify that the zoom in was correct or not okay uh, that it was not over uh, 100% but either way you get an idea that yes you can do it on multiple uh, applications on multiple environments and be able to test how it is working right and then you can also confirm that it is working fine out here okay now what you need to do is you need to test this on mobile applications how do you test anything on a mobile application one way is that the difference between a regular web-based browser and a mobile application is that you would see give me a second please you would see the display being different how will the display be different the display is going to be different uh, for one reason one is that more lot of applications when you do a resize to a more mobile like display on your browser itself okay you would see the application changing automatically to show you uh, that specific display. I'll probably figure out one of these applications which can. Or what you can try and do is, I'm not sure, but you can try going to m.twitter.com. Okay, mobile.twitter.com. Okay. What is an application that you use uh, as on the, what is a mobile application that you use by using the browser within the uh, within your uh, mobile device what is that application called is it a native app no native app is the one that you download using an app store install on your mobile device or your smartphone and then you run it every time when you use your inbuilt browser on your mobile device or smartphone and you go to a website you are looking at the web based device okay this website mobile.twitter.com is asking to store data on your computer for offline use. Allow or no? That's okay. I'll say allow. It doesn't matter. Okay. So now here is how mobile.twitter.com is looking. Do you see this? And now let's do the same on m.twitter.com. I think I did it on my, uh, out here. And see how does this display look. It doesn't matter. The size no longer matters because it is mobile.twitter.com. Now do you see uh, the website here? Okay. The difference is the Firefox browser on uh, this specific twitter.com seems to be different and I just discovered honestly right now. I didn't realize this earlier. Uh, then what we see in an IE. This is what we are seeing from an IE browser on a mobile device. So this depends basically on the operating system and the browser that you installed on that specific device to run. What you're still doing is the mobile uh, based, uh, is on the web based application but uh, directing to the URL for the mobile. Because what happens is even if I go to a mobile device and I write twitter.com, it will automatically go and load this specific page or this specific page. So what does this mean? This means that before we test our application, we have to make sure that our test cases have been accordingly modified to suit uh, that specific scenario of testing. And when we go into uh, the mobile device using Android SDK, that is how it is. Okay. So next session, what we're going to do is I will show you how to install Android SDK, why that is important. And we will look into, so we haven't done this. Uh, we're going to look into how we will go about doing uh, more in terms of uh, customizing the test cases for the mobile device and then executing. This is approach one, very basic lay, low level uh, approach. Then we'll get to more advanced approaches, okay, how we really do best practices in mobile application testing and so on. All right, thanks everyone. We'll see you in the next session. Bye for now.